One of the main obstacles that we face in developing a Christ-like character which God wants to grow in us is temptation and knowing how to deal with temptation. So we're going to spend uh, today and tomorrow in our devotions thinking through how, how temptation comes, what it's doing, because behind temptation are two things. There's our evil hearts. Jesus talks about how sin comes out of the evil from within in Mark chapter 7. You remember, he says it's not an external, godliness isn't a matter of external performance and ritual and washings and cleansing. No, no, no. The, the cleansing that needs to happen is from within, for out of men's hearts comes evil desires, greed, lust, deceit, and all the rest of the list that he goes on with. But also there is the devil, the Satan himself. He is the father of lies and he brings temptations into our path and wants to use temptation to destroy us and take us away from God and his purposes for our lives. So what do we do with that? Well, the first thing to do is to be aware of the devil's schemes. Paul talks in 2 Corinthians 1. He's talking about a particular church matter that's going on and the, the sin that's happened and the way the church has dealt with it in a godly way. But he says in chapter 2 and verse 5, if anyone has caused pain, he's caused pain not so much to me, but to some degree, not to exaggerate, to all of you. The punishment by the majority is sufficient for that person. As a result, you should instead forgive and comfort him. Otherwise, he may be overwhelmed by excessive grief. Therefore, I urge you to reaffirm your love for him. I wrote for this purpose to test your character to see if you're obedient in everything. Anyone you forgive, I do too. For what I have forgiven, if I have forgiven anything, it is for your benefit in the presence of Christ, so that we may not be taken advantage of by Satan, for we are not ignorant of his schemes. Paul faced temptation, the church faced temptation, Jesus faced temptation, and one of the greatest things we can do is to be aware of the devil's schemes. How does he operate? How does temptation come? Because when we recognize the patterns of the devil's work, then we can resist it, we can start to deal with it, and we can you know, start to grow in our Christ-like character. So the devil uses basically a five-step process to uh, bring temptation into our lives. The first thing he does is identify desires. You see this right throughout the scriptures. You know, what is it that's going to uh, draw us away from God? And he might probe in a couple of different areas, but identifying desires. And those desires might be sinful desires within, desires for vengeance or to control other people. Or they might be good desires, legitimate desires, God-given desires that you know the need to be loved uh, and valued, to, to feel pleasure. They're good things given by God. But temptation starts when Satan identifies those desires and suggests with a thought either that we give in to the evil desire, or that we uh, take a shortcut or go about getting that legitimate desire that's God given in the wrong kind of way, in the right kind of time frame by taking some sort of shortcut to get there. The temptation is beginning within us, that is. It's a, it's a, it's a battle for our hearts and minds. That's what the devil's seeking to work. So the first thing he does is identify desires. The second thing he does is create an opportunity. You know, there's things like, and you, you know, uh, you, He'll bring something into our lives and we'll go, ah, oh, there's that thing and the desire will, will spark. The third step is he, he creates doubt. Um, he, he, you know, the thoughts that he plants in our brains of the, the lies that are the same lies he's been telling from the start. Did God really say, or oh, it's not going to be that bad? Um, you know, he, to... Uh, to doubt God's goodness in all of that. You know, God's just jealous of you. He's withholding good things from you because he's mean. And so that doubt of God's word and of his character and of his love for you. And then step three uses deception, right? He's caused doubt after he's identified and brought the opportunity, uh, raised doubt. He uses deception, right? He just blatantly lies. Satan is a liar from the beginning. He is the father of lies. Jesus tells us in John chapter 8. Uh, we see his lies 
uh, the lying spirits that he's brought, the, the ways that he's blocked things through his lies and created disaster through his lies throughout the scriptures. Uh, and so the lies at the start of the Bible in Genesis chapter 3, you will be wise, you will be like God. I mean, it's not true, all right? But he has played on their desire. He's created doubt in God's goodness and he, he sticks it, the knife in by this deception. Uh, you, know, you, you, you will be wise, you'll be like God, you'll be safe. God's not going to do anything about it. He's not going to judge you. He's not going to destroy you. He's not going to kill you. Uh, the lies that say, no one will know, right? You're the only person, and so it's not affecting anyone else, and so you'll get away with it, and that you can solve your own problems uh, without the need for God and referring to God's ways and His Word uh, or asking God for help. And so there's the first three, four steps, right? Identifying desire, that's what he does. This is the devil's scheme. He creates opportunities. He, he sows doubt. He then uses deception. Uh, and then the last step in the giving in to temptation in the devil's scheme is to create disobedience. Um, after that desire has formed within us and we've got the doubts, well, we know from James chapter 1 that uh, that is going to give birth full to full sin. You see that in James chapter 1 and, um, and verse... Uh, verse 13 no one undergoing a trial should say I'm being tempted by God since God is not tempted by evil and he himself doesn't tempt him but each person is tempted when he's drawn away enticed by his own evil desire and after that desire has conceived he gives birth to sin and when that sin is fully grown he gives birth to death and so that is the devil's schemes he's been there from the beginning and active in everything uh, taking those desires, or either evil desires, or uh, manipulating the good desires that we have, creating opportunities that play to those desires, uh, and then sowing doubt, causing deception, which then breeds disobedience, uh, and lastly is going to result in death and destruction. But God uses temptation at the same time to grow us. It's great, devil's greatest weapon to destroy us. But God wants those moments to be opportunities to grow. So how do we deal with temptation and not give in? Well, we're going to talk a bit more about that in our next devotion. But here's some initial steps, right, that, we should, be, that, that should be in our minds. The first is that we should be refusing to be intimidated. If we're aware, we can say, no, no, I've seen that temptation before. I am not going to go that way. Uh, f resist the devil and he will flee from you, we're told in James. The devil is a prowling lion. He's seeking to uh, destroy us, but because of the cross, he's had his teeth pulled. And so the worst thing he can give you, as Philip Jensen would always say, is a nasty gummy, right? Painful, unpleasant but that's the worst he can do. And so refuse to be intimidated. Uh, Jesus has defeated Satan at the cross. He's still in his death rays and doing his darndest to destroy God's people and oppose God's work, but refuse to be intimidated. You're a child of God. You've been saved by Jesus. You have all the promises. You have the Holy Spirit within, and you have his word, which gives us all the ammunition that we need. Right, so refuse to be intimidated. The second is to recognize these other schemes of the devil and to prepare for them. Okay, when you when, to be uh, to be aware is to be armed. Right, so you, once we're aware, this is how the devil operates. Well, we can start looking for when he is attacking and bringing temptation that that through uh, working in our desires and say you know questioning ourselves, reflecting you know, where where is our heart taking us, and is is the the doubt, the deception that's going on at the moment designed to take me away from God and His ways? You know, how are these temptations, you know, how am I meant to be responding to them? Right, thinking through them. All right, if we're prepared. We can be armed for the fight. And then the last thing is to ask for God's help. Of course, you know, we're not going to beat Satan in our own strength. We need God's help. And lucky he is on our side. We're his children and he's given us his spirit. He's given us his son uh, to pay for us. 
Uh, and so he is uh, at work in us day by day. And so ask for his help. Whatever you're anxious about, whatever temptation you face, we should be praying to the Lord. In fact, what did Jesus teach his disciples to pray when they asked him, you know, they, he, pray for God's glory, pray for his kingdom to come and his will to be done on earth as in heaven, and to then to give us our physical needs, but also our spiritual needs, right, that he might lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Are you praying to God who is more powerful than the devil, the one who made the universe and the devil and for whatever reason and so you know the devil is just a creature he is not creator he is subordinate he is lower and so he's not as powerful as god if you want help in temptation go to god and so refuse to be intimidated uh, recognize the devil's schemes and prepare for when those temptations come put the things in place that you might need to in order to say, I'm how is how I'm going to deal with this situation this is a frequent temptation, and so these are the guards I'm going to put in place, and ask for God's help. And God is amazing; He loves us, and He wants us to grow, uh, so and to learn how to resist it as we grow in Christ-like character through His Spirit and His Word. Why don't we pray for God's help now, Father? We thank you that you make us aware of temptation and how it comes and how the devil is behind it manipulating our hearts and our desires uh, sowing doubt creating opportunities uh, deceiving us with blatant lies that contradict you and your word and your ways uh, and you're sowing disobedience in our hearts uh, that bears fruition and so father please help us never to be intimidated to resist the devil to that he and he'll flee from us that's what you've promised uh, help us to recognize his deceits and the things that are frequent temptations in our lives. Help us to recognize the new ones as they come as well, because he's always seeking to attack us and bring us down. But help us always to put our lives in your hands, to request your help, knowing that you are more powerful than he is, that you are more powerful than the one who is in the world, uh, and that you delight in the obedience of your children. And so we pray, please, that you'll lead us not into temptation, but when we do face it, that you'll deliver us from evil. And so, Father, we ask, please, that you would um, just mould us and shape us when we face temptations, so that we can deal with them in a right way uh, and we can grow in our faith, our trust, and our Christ-like character. We thank you for your promises, for the death of Jesus in our place, to bring us forgiveness and healing and life and change and we ask please that we might live for your glory in everything amen god bless everyone uh, we'll continue talking about temptation and how to deal with it tomorrow uh, as we continue our devotionals so god bless